There's three key areas um, that you want to stop and assess if you're ever in an emergency situation like this. First, you're going to want to look at your immediate person and think about what you have on your body at this time. So if I look, think about what I'm wearing right now. I've got blue jeans on. Uh, blue jeans uh, will not do a good job of keeping you warm. Definitely not waterproof or even water resistant. Um, I have a basic cotton t-shirt and then a, a cheap flannel shirt. This isn't wool or anything like that. I do have a good waterproof outer shell that I know will keep me dry. I've tested this thing. I know it's good. And I do have a hood. So that's huge. I have my ball cap on. Again, not waterproof, uh, but it may help a little bit. Um, I'm wearing my hiking boots, which you can't see in the video there, uh, which are not waterproof. Water resistant, but not waterproof. Um, however, I do have uh, paracord laces on my boots and this is actually Titan Survival Survivor Cord um, so it also has fishing line, jute twine tinder uh, in there um, as well as a copper snare wire so just something to think about that I do have that um, with me in case this situation gets drug out uh, further. I also have my belt if I need to use that for something else. I have my wallet uh, with credit cards and things like that not a lot in there that's gonna be useful um, I do have my car keys on me as well as my cell phone which of course uh, for this scenario I don't have any any signal so I'm gonna want to make sure I turn that off and that I uh, get it somewhere where it's gonna be dry in case I do get somewhere where I'm close enough that I have signal that I can call for help I do happen to be wearing a paracord survival bracelet uh, that I made for myself which has a mini ferro rod on there so that is good uh, good to note um, unfortunately I will not be able to start a fire tonight it's been raining all day everything is soaking wet and it's way too late in the game to even be thinking about trying to do that but that would be something to keep in mind for tomorrow uh, the next area you'll want to look is in your immediate surrounding area so that's going to be everything that's right around where you are at the time you stop as well as what's in your gear if you have a pack so we'll do a quick assessment on that make sure you check all your pockets because especially when you're stressed in your emergency situation you're not gonna be thinking clearly so you're gonna forget what you have so I'm checking the side pockets nothing in here um, I do have you can see one empty Gatorade bottle here so I already drank this earlier today however that is a container for water so I want to hold on to that and then I do have my regular water bottle which is still a good part of the way full check the front pockets it looks like I have a Ziploc bag with a few snacks um, and there's also a Ziploc bag here make sure you never drop these or lose them because um, something like this I could use to carry water um, I could use it also to protect my cell phone and things like that tonight this is a okay this is a, a buff this is a polar buff so this is like a scarf head wrap type of deal so this is great I'm definitely gonna want to use this tonight to help keep my face warm um, awesome I did bring a life straw with me so I do know that if I'm out here for multiple days um, that I've got some way to get uh, safe drinking water anything else in this front pocket okay I have my flash blade from UST it's like a little keychain uh, it has a small LED flashlight on there and it has a small knife so I do have some kind of a cutting tool and then also a, a bottle opener so if I do have to pry on anything I'm not going to use that knife blade and risk breaking it you've got this that you can work with I'll, I'll put that in my coat pocket because I know this jacket does have uh, sealed uh, zippers on it so that will not get wet so I'll put that there right now so I do have my little UST tick wrangler on here as well that's good that I have that but also I can use this as a uh, ferro striker be mindful of all your equipment by the way as well because this backpack I know is not waterproof um, it does have an, a rain cover though that I'll pull out so okay let's see what else we have in here we do have a small first aid kit which is great um, this is a basic kit the hiker might carry um, which is great if you did get any scrapes or boo-boos uh, but also think outside the box uh, there's a ton of stuff inside first aid kits that makes really really awesome tinders so to make sure you keep that first aid kit dry okay so have an extra pair of socks that's pretty typical uh, okay good also have a beanie now, this is not waterproof or anything but uh, 
that would be a little better than my ball cap as far as keeping me warm. Looks like I was planning on having a relaxing little day out in the woods, gonna do a little light reading, and uh, that didn't go so well for me. But the good news is, dry paper, I can also use this as tinder. So I do have a hoodie in here, and I know that this hoodie is water resistant, but it's not waterproof. So what I'm gonna do right now, because the temperature is already starting to drop, so I'm, I'm already sure that my, my body temp is gonna start trying to drop. I'm gonna go ahead and put this hoodie on, get my rain jacket right back on, so I know that's covered up. I've still got my scarf and all that. I don't know if I quite need that yet, so I'll wait on that and see how it goes tonight. Uh, one important thing to remember when you're layering up, you don't wanna get overheated and start sweating uh, because then the reverse can happen and then you can uh, get in hypothermia because you'll sweat and then you'll start getting cold. So do not over layer, take your time and uh, adjust as necessary. What else do we have in here? Okay, we have our Titan Survival Emergency Sleeping Bag. So if I did nothing else right packing this bag, um, this could be the type of thing, this small little deal that could really, really save your life seriously. They do come in a sturdy case there you can see with a drawstring on it and they build theirs to be able to be used multiple times. Now this thing's not indestructible by any stretch of the imagination. It's still a, you know, kind of like space blanket type material, uh, but they do make theirs, uh, from what I can tell, a lot stronger than some of the cheap ones you see on the market, because especially if like this where it's, it's starting to try to start raining again now and it's supposed to pick up tonight later on, um, you need something that's going to stay waterproof. So if this tears easily or something like that or the seam blows out, then you're in big trouble. They are sealed on all the sides. You can go ahead and put your feet in, pull it up uh, as high as you can and it's not going to let air circulate around. You know, a space blanket, you got to play with it more, get yourself wrapped and all that. Um, now, I would have loved to see if there were a nether, just a emergency blanket in here, then we could have potentially done something as far as uh, making ourselves like a, some kind of a, a shelter, some kind of a cover. But unfortunately, we do not have that, so we're going to have to go without. So this is, this is all we've got. Closed up check and make sure that I haven't dropped anything on the ground. So I want to make sure I get, come on, get this bag covered up so what I do have in here, if it starts pouring down rain overnight, I won't lose it. So that's ready to go. And uh, I'll make sure I keep that nearby me tonight while I'm sleeping. So um, lastly, so I've looked on my immediate person, I've looked at um, in my sur immediate surrounding area, um, there's not a lot around here, and then after that you would look in your, um, you would expand out into the broader area. Unfortunately, again, because um, in this scenario I have made the mistake of waiting too long, it's dark now, it is too late for me to try to, uh, you know, do much exploring. All right, guys, so I did a little bit of looking around, and, you know, you would hope, you know, you'd think that you'll find that nice, ideal tree, a, a nice, big, fat tree that you can lean your back up against with no low branches, you know, nice, thick canopy, and uh, I'm just not finding that. Uh, if I looked further, I probably would have found something better, but again, uh, like a lot of people do, um, you know, you wait too long, and it's getting so dark, like so, so dark, so fast. You know, even when you're out here doing something like this, um, I know where I'm at. You know, the reality is I'm, I'm not lost. You know, when it starts getting dark, you can't see. Um, every little noise out in the woods jumps out at you. And I can see, um, you know, if this was a real world situation where I was really lost, um, it would be very hard to focus. You'd be freaking out. Um, that's why one of the most important things is, is to stay, stay calm. I think ahead. Make sure you have the gear you need. Yes, that's important. Could I have set myself up better uh, on this uh, deal right here? Yeah. I mean, shoot, if I would have had a shelter tarp in here, then, you know, it would have been like camping. Uh, but, you know, that's not always the way it goes. Uh, but the important thing is to be mentally prepared that if something like this does happen, that you're ready to adjust, um, you're willing to deal with the stresses that you're gonna have to deal with. So we wanna go ahead and we'll get situated. 
we're going to pull out our Titan Survival Emergency Sleeping Bag. Um, now one of the things, especially if you're using something like this too, check the ground where you're going to be at real quick. Uh, make sure you don't have any big sticks or anything jutting up that's going to tear this thing. Because for one, it might start leaking water and you'll get wet in the middle of the night. And for two, um, you know, when you get lost, you don't know if it's going to be one night. So um, you want it to last. I have a few small uh, pieces of duct tape on my bag from when I taped up my straps. See, and we missed that when we were talking, so that's something to think about. So if something did happen, I, I got a tear, I know that I could look on my bag, pull that tape off, and potentially fix it. So it's the, li the little stuff that can make a difference. All right, let's go ahead and open this up. Um, by the way, while we're talking about this, they do have these in like camouflage colors, if that's what you're looking for. Um, you know, if you're like a prepper or somebody who's not wanting to be found. Uh, but for most folks, hikers and stuff, this, uh, this safety orange is good because it's going to stand out. Um, you could also use this for signaling or something like that. That rain is starting to pick up now too, so I definitely don't want to hang out here much longer. There we go. This stuff just kind of has a lot of static to it. Um, if I had more light and stuff, I'd probably just try to shake this out like a garbage bag and it would be fine, but being back in the woods here, I don't want to risk that, so I don't want to risk tearing it. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and, and climb into this, my boots and all, just be careful. Make sure I pull this up as much as I can. I'm a little bit shorter, so I can probably afford to stretch my legs out a little bit. If you're taller, you might not have that luxury. Uh, but this is like a sleeping bag, as I mentioned, so this is open down here. So you're going to want to think about this. If it's raining, right, and I go to sleep like this, what's going to happen? It's going to fill up with water. So the best thing I can do right now is to open up my rain jacket and pull this emergency blanket up around my chest. And then if any rain that hits my rain jacket, it'll just run off instead of running inside. All right, so I've got that. I've got my hood, and uh, I'm as situated as I can be. It is gonna be a long night. So I'm gonna shut this off for a while. We're gonna see how this works out. All right, folks, so just to give you an update, uh, it is now 10 p.m. We've been out here for a uh, couple hours. Um, so that method I was using of tucking the sleep bag up under my rain jacket, that works really well as long as you're planning on sitting up. Um, and a lot of times, um, you know, you might be sitting up a good part of the night. I know for me, the first couple hours, honestly, um, you know, that kind of hypervigilance kicks in and you're hearing every noise and everything. And it's just, you're not really um, looking like, you know, you're not trying to, to, to get to sleep at that point. Um, so, but now that I am kind of trying to actually lay down and rest, um, the best thing you can do with a emergency sleeping bag like this is to basically pull it up over your body and make yourself like a big cocoon. And this sleeping bag, at least for me, is big enough that I can kind of pull my body up into a fetal position because you want to kind of try to pull everything close to your core, your arms and your legs and all that um, to get that warmth all kind of together. Um, and then you can pull this up over your head and kind of and bunch it up and just leave enough of an of a opening obviously so you know fresh air can get in and out you don't want to uh, accidentally suffocate yourself overnight that would be pretty unfortunate um, to explain the way emergency sleeping bags work um, they're not about insulation you can see this isn't doesn't have insulation in it um, what it is about is reflecting your body heat and your whole body's in there and you've got it pulled up tight and enclosed um, as much as possible uh, while still allowing you to breathe so that it can hold all that body heat so as your body heat escapes that it'll be contained within that uh, within the emergency sleep bag and it'll keep you warmer so far all of the seams have held up really well um, there's been no tears um, again I was careful to check the ground to make sure there were no sticks or anything before I lay down to make sure I didn't get a puncture uh, but I've had no issues with um, um, water leaking into the bag um, my blue jeans unfortunately were a little damp just from standing in the rain and then from getting situated in the sleeping bag and everything and i'm feeling that in a few spots still honestly um, because it allowed my pants to get wet 
Um, but if your blue jeans get soaking wet, um, you're going to be in, in a lot of trouble. Uh, I have a good rain jacket, which is great, but a lot of people, very few people bring rain pants. Uh, but in a situation like this, if you get soaking wet, it can be very, very dangerous. Um, so that's definitely something to consider. But the fact that I had this thing and it's helping to keep the parts of me, uh, my clothing dry that aren't waterproof is huge. Um, so, so far things are going pretty well. Uh, hopefully I can get a little bit of uh, shut eye here and uh, check back in with you guys in a, uh, a couple hours. Hey guys, so it is 125 now. Uh, I actually got a little bit of sleep in there. I'm not sure exactly how much. I kind of lost track of time. Um, but I was able to, uh, to doze off for a little while. The sleeping bag is still doing a good job of um, keeping me warm. Uh, it also does a uh, good job of uh, blocking out the wind. Um, so that makes a big difference as far as that's concerned. Um, one thing I have started to notice now is some uh, condensation starting on the inside of the sleeping bag. Um, if you've ever used an uh, emergency sleeping bag before, you know that this is not something that's unheard of. You know, you've got your soda with the ice in there, and then you bring that glass out into the heat, and then that moisture starts to build up on the outside of the glass. And that's due to the, the temperature difference between the uh, material on the inside of the glass and the outside of the glass. It's kind of a natural reaction. And uh, you can get the same type of reaction with one of these sleeping bags. Um, so it's definitely a little bit, um, a little bit damp inside at this point. Uh, but I'm um, a lot drier than I would have been without it for sure. So one of the things that I did do when I woke up and I noticed that and it had stopped raining um, out uh, out here. So I got out of the sleeping bag for a little bit, stretched my legs. Um, and kind of opened it up and shook it out a little bit and got uh, a little bit of that extra uh, moisture out of there. But it still wasn't too bad as far as that was concerned. Actually better than I expected um, considering the uh, circumstances. Um, it is pretty, pretty cold out and um, it's been raining pretty steady um, most of the night. Uh, so it is very, very moist out here. You can just feel it in the air the air is just saturated so uh you know given that uh given the situation and the fact that i really don't have um, any significant um shelter whatsoever uh, i didn't have any kind of tarp that i could set up um to block the rain or, or anything so with all that being said um it's actually worked uh, really really well um, i'm a little bit cold right now um but not enough that it's um, causing me to, to shiver or anything like that. I'm, I'm doing all right. So at this point, we've really got a few more hours um, just kind of waiting for um, the sun to start coming up um, to give us a little bit of, of light um, so we can go ahead and, and get out of here. All right, folks, we made it through the night. I actually woke up around 3.30 in the morning because I was very cold. Um, what folks say about, um, you know, getting coldest before sunrise, that tends to be the, the case from what I've seen. So, um, but I made it through, and I'm all good now. Surprisingly enough, um, I got back to sleep, and uh, I slept so well that I slept through uh, sunrise. I kind of expected it to wake me up, but... Uh, so what are my thoughts? Um, the Titan Survival Emergency Sleeping Bag definitely got me through the night. Um, it was not the... Uh, most ideal or most comfortable situation um, certainly but uh, it uh, it got me through um, so definitely an emergency situation this certainly could um, save your life uh, one of the key things we've learned kind of from this scenario is about being prepared being prepared in case you have to stay overnight making sure you have the right equipment stopping early enough to better prepare um, so you can make yourself more comfortable uh, through the night and uh, just, uh, you know, uh, having the stuff that you need uh, is key. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and uh, pack this up, and we're going to get uh, headed out of here.
But right now, we're just getting it stuffed in here. If I fold it up nice, it would fit in there nice and easy, but um, I know I'm going to unpack it and shake it out and dry it out and everything, so I'm not too worried about it. But still got it in there. All right, folks, let's get out of here. All right, guys. So now that I've had a chance to kind of get back to the house, get cleaned up, warmed up a little bit, um, kind of look over the footage and think about what happened last night, I'd like to go over a couple of things with you. First of all, I want to make sure I'm perfectly clear that this was not meant to be a how-to uh, survival video. There's a lot of stuff you saw in the beginning of this video uh, where I kind of deliberately set myself up for failure in a sense. Um, if you recall, the scenario was a hiker or somebody just going out for a walk in the woods who got lost, who uh, waited until after dark because they were in a panic trying to find their way out, waited until it was already dark to think about settling down for the night. Um, so I gave myself next to no time to prepare. Um, I also had very minimal uh, supplies with me. Um, you saw in my kit, I did not really have any kind of a serious cutting tool. I had a very small knife, uh, but not any kind of a uh, survival type knife. Um, I had a very small ferro, uh, which in ideal situations, I could start a fire just fine. But those were definitely less than ideal. Everything was completely soaked and wet, um, so fire wasn't really an option. So I could have had some kind of uh, dry tinder with me. Um, I could have had a larger uh, oversized ferro rod or some kind of a fire starting tool or even something as simple as a Bic lighter. I tell you, uh, some people might think that that's kind of like cheating, uh, but the reality is, generally speaking, uh, a Bic lighter is part of my everyday uh, carry. Just having a disposable lighter just so you always have an easy source of uh, ignition. Um, you know, ferro rods, stuff like this, that's great too. And it's definitely great to have, um, even more important to make sure you know how to use it. Um, but why not have a lighter, right? That's something that's super easy to carry. So really there were a lot of mistakes in this video, kind of from a survival perspective. Um, that I kind of deliberately did to myself uh, just for demonstration purposes. But they're common mistakes that a lot of people make. And to be perfectly honest, the reality is there's been times where I've gone out in the woods uh, completely unprepared. Thankfully, nothing's ever happened, so it's never come back to bite me. Uh, but, you know, it's easy. You see those shows on TV, you know, of the, the people who uh, barely survive out in the woods or who don't survive. And you go, man, I can't believe that they did that. They didn't have this. They didn't have that. They didn't have this. You know, what were they thinking? Well, I mean, we, do, we all have done it from time to time. If we look at ourselves honestly, we've just never got caught in the situation uh, where it caught up with us. Um, so something to be very, very mindful of. The primary purpose of what I was doing last night really was to, for one, to test out the emergency sleeping bag uh, that I got from Titan Survival, as well as just to see in general the whole concept of an emergency sleeping bag, how much uh, would it help you in an emergency situation if you did not have any other kind of shelter to depend on. Now, if I had all the time in the world to you know, build some kind of a bush shelter, get some branches together and do all that, if I had time to start a campfire and you know everything like that, then it really wouldn't be much of a test. Because to be honest, if you could get a, you know, a uh, shelter built and get a good campfire going, I mean, you'd be just fine probably without any kind of sleeping bag or anything. So that wouldn't really be an effective test. Um, you can certainly utilize products like this in a situation like that where you're a little better off and you'll probably have a little better result. Uh, but I wanted to see what the product could really do kind of in you know a, a uh, less than ideal situation. And that's definitely what we got last night. There comes a certain point where it's time to bunker down. Um, we should have done that earlier in the scenario. We should have done that while it was still light, uh, but we didn't, so we made the best of it. But at any rate, the sleeping bag, it got me through the night. That's the main thing um, to uh, put through to you guys. Uh, ideally, if I would have had some kind of cover overhead, it would have worked better. One of the issues you saw in the video that I had to deal with was the condensation. And that's something that you, that you just get with emergency sleeping bags, the way they are. 
Um, but I think if I had some kind of decent cover, if I just had a really basic shelter tarp um, in my bag that I could have just set up real quick, um, that way I wouldn't have actually had rain landing directly on me. You know, because the entire outside of the emergency sleeping bag was just soaked with that cold rain. So I think that magnified that problem of the um, condensation on the inside of the bag. So definitely would be a wise idea to always carry, I would say, some kind of a shelter tarp. Now, and it doesn't have to be. I'm not talking about some big, heavy, um, you know, blue tarp from Home Depot. Um, you can get plenty of, like, ultralight tarps. I have a um, hex tarp from Ultimate Survival Technologies that I picked up. That would have been great because it comes in a nice bag, drawstring bag, uh, has guy lines in there with some, a few stakes. So I could have just set up a real simple, just, you know, A-frame tent, just, and I would have had that cover over the top. So all of that moisture, all that rain would have been hitting the top of there and would have got some condensation on the, probably on the other, underside, you know, throughout the night of that. Uh, but not as much on the emergency sleeping bag itself. So uh, I think that would have been a great companion to this product. However, in the end of the day, this is something that's small, that's super lightweight. I mean, it weighs next to nothing. So it's nothing to throw it in your pack, no matter how light of a pack um, you're carrying, to just toss it in there and you know you've got something, you know you've got that emergency backup um, in case things go sideways. So definitely a, a good product. I thought it was a good night overall, and uh, I highly recommend whatever setup you have. You should always have some kind of emergency shelter setup. Even if it's, if all it is is an emergency sleeping bag, all right, at least you have that. If it's an emergency sleeping bag and a tarp, or maybe you buy one of those, you know, emergency, uh, what, do you, what do you call them, uh, like tube tents you guys have seen, where it comes with the line, and it's basically like a big space blanket, like a a big triangle is how it's supposed to come out. You need to take that out and test it overnight. I challenge you. And if you're not willing to do that, if you don't think that you're going to you know, make it through the night comfortable enough to deal with it, then you probably shouldn't be counting on that in an emergency situation. Because the reality is, until you take it out and use it, you don't know if it's going to work or if it's going to fail. And if it fails when you need it to work, you could end up dead. That's the reality of it. So better to try it out when you know you have, you know, a controlled environment, you know that you can bug out if you need to, if things start going sideways, than to find out uh, when your life depends on it. So make sure you test out your gear, you know how to set it up, and you know that it's actually going to give you what you need uh, for that time of year. You should have that emergency kit, you should have that emergency plan. And uh, when you do a dry run on it, you can see where the weak spots are. You can see uh, where the potential for problems are, and you can address those. And then you can make sure you have that ideal kit. You can keep it as lightweight as you want, but have all the items that you need to make sure you can survive um, the worst conditions that that particular time of year might have to offer. Okay, folks, I just want to say that I appreciate your support. I appreciate you tuning in and checking out this video. If you've got any comments or questions, feel free to leave them down below this video um, and we'll do our very best to uh, get back to you. Uh, while you're at it, if you want to keep seeing videos like this as well as all kinds of gear reviews and uh, things of that nature, subscribe to our channel. And you can also check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and also on our blog. Thanks for watching.